What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Stan of SJ Square Photography, bringing you back another tutorial video today. I know, I know, I have not done a tutorial video in a very long time, but I've got a real good explanation for you. Explanation is, I'm a portrait retoucher on Affinity Photo on iPad version. And really, all the techniques that I've already shown you in my previous tutorials is pretty much what I do and still continue to do right now. Now, I do have other ways I can show you to, that I have found to be more efficient. But other than that, it's all the same way. And that's the reason why I haven't done a lot of tutorial videos because I only use it to do portrait retouching. There's only so much I, I do on Affinity Photo for my for my portrait retouching. But today I got actually a real good video for you. This is detail enhancement part two. Now I've done the first one, go ahead and look at that card at the top if you wanna see how I got the detail enhancement, which I'm gonna show you right here, which is pretty much what you do is you just go ahead and duplicate the second of the high frequency layer and then you just change the opacity. As you can see right here, let me go ahead and show you real quick, just give you an in touch. As you can see, it's completely really detailed right now, but I wanna bring that down and just go back to around the 40 range. Now, let me show you. Now, then in order to go ahead and sharpen those details, it's really, really simple, really, really easy. I'm gonna show you what to do. So now, after this, I'm, I'm gonna go step by step, but I'm gonna kinda go back, so just kinda stay and pay attention real quick. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and got a Gaussian blur layer. I'm gonna go ahead and erase out of the eyes, of course, because you still want the eyes to be sharp, so you don't want the Gaussian blur to be in the eyes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and erase this real quick. Do a real sloppy job. All right, now, as you can see, this looks pretty good. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and select all these, you wanna put them in a group, and then you want to go ahead and rasterize the photo, which makes it into one photo. Now, I know what you're saying here. Oh, Stan, why don't you just go ahead and select all of them and merge and hit merge select layers. Now, I'm gonna go back and show you the reason why I don't do it that way. Let's go back a couple steps. Now, as you can see, I got all of these selected. Let me reselect them. Now you go over here and you go to merge select layer. Let me show you exactly what it does. As you can see, it has absolutely got worse blur than what we previously had. So it's something that has to do with the Gaussian blur being a child layer. Now, let me go back again. I'm gonna show you this again. Now, I'm gonna go here. Now, as you can see, the Gaussian blur is a child layer as of right now. But if I decide to bring that out, look what it does. It gets blurry once again. Uh, I don't know why it does that. Um, I guess I got to contact Affinity and figure it out. But once I go back and bring it to back to a child layer, it gets back and acts totally normal. So that's the reason why which, on this you want to select all of these and then group them. And then you want to rasterize into a single picture that's because that's the only way it works correctly now after you go ahead and do that now what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and duplicate your layer like so and then you want to go ahead and go to adjustments brightness and contrast i'm just going to bring down the contrast just a tad bit to 10 and then i'm going to go over here and i'm going to go to merge down it's going to merge into the layer we just had and then i'm going to go over to live filters go to sharpen and i'm going to go to high pass and now i'm going to make this really really outrageous so i can go ahead and show you what what it does now once you do that go ahead apply go back over to the layers go back the three prongs and what we're going to do is we're going to change this to vivid light now voila that's as you can see it is completely ridiculously sharp now uh now of course you don't want to lose at 100 percent you want to go down here and play with the opacity and see what you like now i think i want to go ahead and play around with the i don't know 
just kind of make it seem out. But 30 to 40 range, as you can see, it absolutely looks amazing. Now, if you go back out again, absolutely looks amazing. Now, I think what I'm going to do on this scene is actually hit a bright brightness. And I'm just going to bring down that brightness just a tad bit because I think I like it a little bit moodier myself. Yeah, just like that. Bingo. And pretty much that's about, pretty much about it with this tutorial. It's very, very simple, very, very easy. Like I said, I have created an action to run this for me automatically, but this is the way after you do a detail enhancement and you want to sharpen those details, this is the way you want to do it. So I hope you really go ahead and take this out and apply it into your own portrait photography and go ahead and leave it down in the comments. Let me know what you're working with. Show us some things. Like I said, I love interacting with my fans in the comments. So just go ahead and definitely leave that down there. And if you have any more ideas or anything that you would like for me to show you in Affinity Photos, I definitely do request videos all the time. So if you want to go ahead and leave that in the comment, put a request on what you want to see, I would be more than happy to show you. And of course, if you like what I'm doing on my channel and you want to support me, go ahead and hit that subscribe, like, and share this for me. It really helps me out. And until the next tutorial video, peace.